right, g'day guys, Paul here from Deep Cycle Systems and uh, today we're going to have a chat about uh, the lithium battery standards that people are still a bit confused about inside caravans and we've got the perfect opportunity here now to talk about the upgrade we've done to this Jayco base station Outback um, These rigs are really cool, they've got the integrated toy ha hauler out the back with the ramp so you can put your motorbikes in the back They come very basic, uh, the fit out from the factory is very basic and Obviously, we've done a nice upgrade here. We're going to take you through it all today and chat about these uh, lithium battery standards. Right, cool. So the factory battery compartment electronics are hidden under this uh, bench seat in here. So we're going to lift this compartment up and I'll show you the upgrades we've done. So you've got um, two of our DCS 180 amp hour um, lithium auxiliary batteries inside this IP66 metal enclosure. You've got the... Victron Multi Plus 3000 watt inverted charger. So that one gives you automatic changeover and uh, battery charging as soon as you plug it into mains. There's not much room in here, but it does get very good airflow and we've left exhaust space for it as well. So it's gonna have a pretty good life. And we've also got the 30 amp MPPT solar charger. And we've upgraded to a really nice 500 watt sun power solar panel on the roof of this caravan and i'll take you through now and show you the uh, battery compartment all right so this is the enclosure it's in there beautifully and obviously the battery's sitting there all right, guys, so part of the upgrades, uh, we're putting in two of our 180 amp hour auxiliary batteries um, for a 360 amp hour combined house battery bank, 3000 watt multi plus inverter, upgraded solar system, and um, it makes this caravan very, very livable off grid, right? So you can run quite a few things, use quite a lot of power, and it certainly makes it uh, life a lot more enjoyable when you're off grid in these caravans. Now with these lithium battery standards, so first of all guys, why do we make a 180 amp hour auxiliary battery? Okay, first of all, it's actually company policy that we don't produce batteries using battery cells more than 50 amp hours of capacity, okay? These batteries are the only exception from every single battery that we manufacture. So we always have been choosing battery cells somewhere between four and 40 amp hours of capacity max, okay? Now, the reason for that is it all comes down to safety. If you have one big 300 or 400 amp hour battery pack uh, in your caravan and you drop one cell, you've got no battery power. Okay, so that's, that's one thing. Redundancy is obviously a major factor, but safety is critical. So you want smaller capacity batteries connected in parallel for safety reasons. Okay, if one of these cells is going to let go into gas, You've got no chance of containing a big battery cell um, when it decides to go to thermal runaway. The smaller the capacity of that battery cell, the less damage it's going to cause. Okay, and this is why the industry has implemented the lithium battery standards in caravans, is primarily for safety reasons. All right. So these batteries in this caravan are fitted in an IP66 metal enclosure that's vented to the outside through a, a one-way membrane valve. And if the batteries do go to thermal runaway, the theory is that they will degas through the valve and, and exhaust the gases or the toxic gases outside the habitable environment, okay? So it's purely, in the, it's purely to do with safety reasons. Now, battery cells that are over 50 amp hours of capacity um, have a higher, a significantly higher probability of the safety release valves not releasing in time. And that's when the batteries can um, catch fire and explode. Battery cells under 50 amp hours of capacity have virtually no chance of that occurring. So it's why our entire product range uses cylindrical cells that are sub 40 amp hours of capacity. These are an exception, but we have tested these and we decided to keep this under 180 amp hours of capacity to keep these type of battery packs super safe and reliable as well. 
Now, the new standards came into effect on the 18th of November 2023. So every RV in the country, in Australia and New Zealand, has to comply with those measures. So be careful of that, guys, because if you get an insurance claim and they go digging and your batteries are installed and they're not compliant, they got a good pretext to avoid, to avoid insurance on you. So it's something to be mindful of. It's also not as simple as just mounting the batteries externally because you need to follow manufacturers IP ratings. Okay. So for example, IP 54 batteries such as these, they can't just be put outside um, externally because you will avoid the warranty. And guys, it's the same reason lead acid batteries fail is for the same reason that lithium batteries fail prematurely is due to ingress and external conditions. So ingress is going to eat away and corrode the battery cell connections in a lead acid battery. Exactly the same thing happens in a lithium battery. The mechanisms, the welding, the connections internally are very similar to lead acid battery. So it's the same principle. Righto, so the 3000 watt Victron Multi Plus. Okay, why is it such a popular um, battery inverter for caravans? The reason for that is because it is integrated and automatic changeover. Okay, so when you plug into mains from the outside, it will power all your GPOs internally from the mains, simultaneously turn on the charger and start stopping, topping up your battery bank. As soon as you unplug, the van continues to run off, uh, off your batteries. You can turn the inverter off, of course, it doesn't need to be on. And good practice is to turn them off when you're not using them because of the standby power consumption. It's just putting a bit of, bit of uh, load on your batteries, which you don't need. Turn the inverter on, use them, and then turn it off, and away you go. And all the GPOs in the caravan obviously get in 230 volts from the batteries, which you need to be mindful of, because that means if you have a hot water system, it's being powered by the batteries. If you have an air conditioning system that's 240 volts and not DC powered, it's coming from the batteries. If you have a three-way fridge, it might prioritize the 240 volts, and it'll be coming from your batteries. So you've got to consider and have a look at all the other appliances in the caravan to make sure you know exactly what's running and you don't get caught out running stuff that you don't need to. Now on the solar side of thing, guys, caravans are notorious for having space taking up of random things. You've got skylights, you've got the, um, you know, IBIS AC units, you know, and there's never good room for, for solar panels. So on this particular van, it's quite a big van. We've just gone to one high performance commercial some power 500 watt module on the back of a 30 amp MPPT reg that can produce easily 120 amp hours a day. So you're virtually replenishing uh, half of this battery bank off that one solar panel um, every day. So rule of thumb, your battery bank should be sized so that you're using approximately 30% of its capacity overnight. Okay, so that you've got about three days of, uh, of power. So if you're drawing more than that on a daily basis, your battery bank's not sized properly. This system here, you can probably deep, deeper discharge them down about 50% on that with that one solar panel and still bring them back the next day. Obviously, if you deep discharge them, you've got to be mindful how much stuff you're running the next day to make sure your solar can replenish uh, the battery capacity. Thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions, get in touch with us on the emails, on the phone calls. If you want to inquire about quality lithium batteries, you want to get it done properly, you want professional advice, contact us and uh, we'll see you out traveling and doing a lap around the uh, country.